Well, hello there and welcome back. This is episode 9 of my Minecraft 1.14 Let's Play. I'm back here at my Ocean Monument. I've got it all filled up here. And I also figured out what went wrong over here. You got this line of hoppers right here with slabs on top of them. Should have been one block lower. So this slab right here is the same block level as this sand. So when the sticky pistons, uh, slime blocks, tried to push it, it couldn't. And so they just dragged the sand back that way instead. And then we hit all the push limits on everything. And it started a chain reaction of everything breaking. And it all started right here. And that's why I didn't notice the issue until it made it all the way to the end. It took me a little over an hour to fill the rest of it. I didn't bother filling this section. This isn't part of the ocean monument. This is going to be, I'm going to replace this with a glass wall. So I'm going to have to get rid of all this extra sand as well. So I didn't bother placing this. This is outside of the ocean monument. This block is the start of the ocean monument. Instead of going back to my base and getting more sand, I just started clearing out the areas. I'm going to have to do this anyways. That's redstone on there. When the sand falls on the redstone, it breaks. So I've got this section cleared out. There's still a lot more to go. But uh, I use that for the sand to finish up this whole uh, filling in. And it probably would have been faster if I had just fixed the machine, but I was worried that if something had gone wrong again, it would have ended up costing me even more time. So I took the safe route, route instead of what was probably the faster route, but it's all done now. I actually forgot that there's not really any glass back in my base because before I left to deal with filling the ocean monument, I put all my excess sand, I just hooked it up to my smelters here, so that they would smelt a whole bunch of glass while I was gone because I knew that I would want to put a wall around the ocean monument. So I'm going to have to collect up all this sand here, or the glass, and then figure out if I have enough lapis to make enough glass for a wall that's going to be blue, light blue, or cyan. I'm going to have to figure out that. I wasn't sure what color I wanted to make the glass wall, so I tried out a few different ones. This is cyan, regular blue, and light blue. And of them, I think light blue actually looks the best and is the cheapest. Cyan looks, I mean, these all look pretty good. Um, I, I might be swayed a little bit by the cheapness factor. I have tons and tons of bone meal, so that makes it cost a lot less lapis. I do think I have, I got like two stacks and then some of lapis, so it should be enough to finish this wall but I think light blue is the way to go. I think it looks fine. It's so easy to underestimate how huge these monuments are. They never really look that big. Even now, it doesn't look that big. But 60 by 60 is just massive. And it took me several hours to clear all this out. I ended up reclaiming just over 27 shulker boxes full of sand. So I lost about 14. So some pretty big losses there, largely due to the issue with the machine that I had 
Um, but I am not going to complain about having 27 choker boxes worth of sand. That will last me quite a while. I'll probably take four of them and put them right on my smelter straight away. But, uh, yeah, this thing is clear. I did quite a bit of work underwater while clearing out that ocean monument without the benefit of a conduit. And I'm not going to make that mistake again. Let's go on a treasure hunt. This first one's not very far from my floating island. It looks like it's over... No, over on that island. There's our first treasure. Oh, yep. And the heart of the sea. Bunch of emeralds. Nothing else that's of much interest. I guess I'll grab this TNT. Next one's here. This is my gravel hills biome. It's pretty close to my base, actually. Looks like it's somewhere down in there. Took me a while to find this one, but there we go. Another heart of the sea. This one's quite a bit further out. Looks like it's somewhere on that shore over there. Found this one right away. Looks like we also get a diamond this time. Last one. Looks like it might be underwater down there. Took me forever to find this one. I seriously destroyed this shore. But that's four Heart of the Seas, and it looks like we get a couple more diamonds as well. So this is Eskel 85's design. He worked with Nembom a little bit, and he came up with this for, this is the chamber that the Guardians spawn in. They come up here because of bubble columns, and they get pushed into this, and this is the drop chamber, and my AFK spot will be down there. And uh, there is a video in the description by No Focus. Um, he broke down Isco's design and created a tutorial on how to use it, uh, how to create it. It's quite useful. And so both of them place slabs. You need slabs at this layer. The reason you need slabs is so you can place a column of water above it that flows. And then they both waterlog those slabs. And it looked really tedious to waterlog all of these slabs. It's like 63 of them, 7 by 9 or something like that. And I don't really want to do that, so I think this will work better if I place down a layer of solid blocks and then place the water down and then I can get source blocks all the way through fairly easily. And then I should be able to waterlog the slabs after the fact and then come back through and remove this. So hopefully this works well. I think if I do this corner, oh, no, not this one. I think I gotta do a diagonal to get them all. Maybe if I just come into this corner and not quite there. I guess if I do this, that should do it once I get both sides done. There we go, and there we go. We got water sources all the way through, and then if I place slabs, there should still be water in there. And then, this I think is a lot easier than the way they did it. So let's see if it works properly. Yep, it looks like they're all waterlogged there. So I don't have any armor on. I've got some invisibility potions. I'm going to try to stay within 24 blocks of everything here so that nothing can spawn. But just in case, I might need these potions. And I've got a conduit active. You can see the little eyeball or whatever it is in the corner there. Ooh, I missed. I guess that's a problem, huh? If you do that, are they still... They still have water sources in them. Can I get out? Yeah, come on. There we go. Uh, yeah, that looks fixable. All right. Finish that off. And then I got to come down here and plant kelp all the way up here. All the way up to the top. Hopefully without any guardian spawning because I'm too close. That is a lot of kelp right there. So I didn't bring the soul sand with me. So I might end up, I don't know which chest I put it in. There's some 
trying to not go 24 blocks away if I can. It's still going to be the hard part. Oh, man. 64 is not enough. All right, well, we got to go over. I put it in one of these chests then. Yep, there it is. And I'm pretty sure there's a guardian in there by now. The hard part is definitely the kelp. But it's definitely it's still a lot easier if there's no guardians for the whole thing. Alright, looks like we didn't quite go far enough away or they didn't spawn quick enough. So I gotta go through, replace all this sand with soul sand, and that'll turn it into um, bubble columns. I also don't want to be standing over those when it happens. And then I need to make sure to collect all this kelp because I need it for the next chamber. I'm so glad no guardians spawned. Invisible or not, just watching no focus fight around the guardians in creative mode just looked like a big old pain. And I'm glad I didn't have to deal with that. So I'm going to leave that roof on for now. I don't have to worry about it anymore. I can walk away and then they should start spawning at some point. Oh, there they already are. And they're not going to bother me. And then I need to do the same thing over here on the other side. And it looks like I've got a good plan. All right, I got two bubble chambers all set up. I got some guardians that are trapped up here against that roof there. I've got a kill room, which is a generous name for four hoppers that are 27 blocks below the fall point. So they'll just fall, take lethal damage, and the hoppers will collect their items. And I can improve that room in the near future. But we are ready to get some water going and let these guys free. So I should be able to come up here and set up a water channel. Like so. And then get my other bucket. Place two buckets here. Oh, let's wait on that one. Two buckets on this other side. Oops. Did we fall? Okay, we're good. There we go. Uh, then two buckets down here. And then the same thing on the other side, make sure all this glass is enclosed properly because I needed to be able to get into it. Let me set up the other side real quick. All right, now I can start letting these guys loose. I think I do want an invisibility potion for this as a precaution because they will start shooting at me pretty much right away. So you can see why we needed the slabs so that this water would flow all the way down to the edge. If you didn't have the slabs, it wouldn't flow properly. Come on, guys. Go with the flow. I am so glad I used an invisibility potion. I would be getting shot a bunch right now if I hadn't. Let's make sure we get these center blocks. Yeah, looks like everything's working well. And then I got to do that to the other side as well so i put a roof on this thing and there's also a row of string that you can kind of barely see if you come so right there you can barely make it out but both of these things are supposed to improve the rates quite a bit and i was still getting really abysmal rates like barely anything was spawning at all it's looking a lot better right now what happened was that i was digging out this area right here to build the kill chamber and as soon as I got down here, I ran into like this vast network of caves that goes on and on and on. And I'm pretty sure I got it all lit up. There might be other caves in the area, but there were a ton of different caves. It actually keeps going. And then back here, there's more caves over here. It just, I, you wouldn't expect this many caves to be underneath an ocean. There's not that many blocks under the ocean. 
so I got a little unfortunate there, but I was fortunate at least that they were, I didn't have to go looking for it. I just found it right away. Um, so now that I've got that all lit up, I've got, this chest is already full. So I'm going to have to do something with that fairly quickly. And I have a weird situation where every once in a while they are living through the fall, which shouldn't be possible. It should be either they live or they die like all of them. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I'm going to have to figure out that one. I'm in creative mode here. This is No Focus's world download. I've done some modifications to test certain things out. And I think the problem is occurring right here where sometimes they are bumping up against each other and it's not counting as a full block for the fall. And I'm not sure exactly what I can do about that. No Focus's solution was to move the hoppers down one block. But I want to be able to have an EXP mode where I've got some pistons that... Uh, that push in like so and then I can they won't die and then I kill them and then I can just turn it off and if the hoppers are two blocks lower then the items will just stay on those blocks and so that didn't really work for me I mean I guess you can occasionally hit the switch to clear the items off but I didn't really like that um, so I tested out a whole bunch of different things and this one I thought was pretty inspired. I've got magma blocks here with minecart hoppers inside of the same block as those. So I push the magma blocks onto the minecart hoppers with pistons so that the soul sand will still, you saw when I killed the eyes on this, um, the items will still get sucked up through the minecart hoppers that it's in the magma blocks. The problem is that the magma blocks they just jump around on them. They don't actually take damage. Even though it takes one point of damage, they never actually die from the magma blocks. They just don't sit on it long enough. They just keep jumping and jumping and jumping, and they refuse to die. So I don't know what the solution is, and I don't think Isco had a solution either because his has enchantment tables down there, and enchantment tables can't be moved with pistons. So I think he just decided that doing it in XP mode all the time was the correct route. He probably gets plenty of items that way. That might be what I do, but I'm still going to be on the lookout for anything that might be a solution to this problem. If you've watched any of my other videos, you've probably realized by now that I love building sorting systems, and I generally don't consider a farm complete until I've got the storage solution figured out for it. And this is no exception. So this one looks a little weird, but I've got the storage solutions set up. Um, I've got a bunch of items. These came in before I had the storage solutions set up. But now you can see, now it's sorting. This is all prismarine crystals. And this is all prismarine shards. So I got five chests of the crystals, four chests of the shards, which matches the crafting recipe. So the idea here is that I come in with my axe. I break these over my head. I use this. And if I crack all of these, if all of these are filled, that will create exactly one chest full of sea lanterns. And as far as the shards go, like, I can just use those. I won't use those nearly as often as I will to make prismarine. But um, because more shards come in than crystals, there's extra storage. This is all overflow for just shards. And then any of the fish are just getting kicked into a lava buck, uh, lava. So we can come back here. It's my little back door access. And you can see, you can actually see fish going by. There's lava right there. I just don't need them. And that includes if I kill this, the guardians myself, you can get puffer fish and tropical fish. I just, I just don't need them. I have a bunch of puffer fish from fishing already. And that's the only one that's useful except for food, and I have golden carrots. So um, this was kind of hard to set up because you can see it runs through uh, the underwater section right here. So let's go back downstairs and we can take a look at this. And so back here, we've got two droppers coming out of the hoppers that are collecting all the items. They spit out their items into the water channel here. And that's what we saw the top of and then that just sends the items on a flowing and then we've got this is the redstone up above it this is the redstone that activates these pistons i still do have an afk 
um, switch right here. You can see this is a decent amount that's been collected. Um, I probably won't AFK that much. I've already got like a ton of items and I already made a bunch of sea lanterns already. So I'm probably not going to need to just a straight AFK. I probably use this for experience most often. So for that, I hit this switch and then they don't die. And then I use a sweeping edge sword. I've got a beacon giving me regeneration so that I don't keep dying from their thorns. This right here makes their knockback not affects me. So I can sit here. I'll probably have to make a cutout on the wall for some anvils or something like that. So I can like enchant stuff while I got while I do this or something like that. So this is probably the primary way I'll use it. And I probably won't worry too much about the straight AFK mode. Um, I can use it, but it has diminishing returns. The more guardians that are down here, the less that will spawn because they will eat up the mob cap. Other than that, though, uh, this is all running pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Again, I got a bunch of items. I missed a block right there. Let's fix that. I might have gone a little overboard with the prismarine bricks. Might want to come back through and add dark prismarine or something like that. But I'm not going to worry about it right now. I'm pretty happy to have this all work, and this is pretty fantastic. I've been AFKing here for a little while, and I'm up to my fourth double chest of prismarine crystals. So doing pretty decent. And I noticed that the further I am away from this, the fewer of these guys that live through the fall. And once I get closer, like especially standing right in front of them, you get a lot more that live through the fall. I'm not sure why that is exactly. Maybe they can see me and they're hitting this edge as they're falling or something like that. It's unclear because they still are, even when I'm further back here, they definitely can't see me um, when they're falling. And some of them are still living. So I don't know. I don't know exactly what's causing it. But it's at least somewhat really reliable. You know, if you AK for a half an hour to an hour, you might get four of them in there. And that doesn't eat into the mob cap too much. So it's still a fairly reliable to AFK. And I still, probably still do want to do some AFKing. At least until I've got a critical mass of, of sea lanterns. And then it will matter a lot less after that point. Once I've got enough that probably will be more than I'll ever use. And then I'll prim primarily just use this for experience. But at this point it's still kind of useful to AFK. So I've been doing that for a while. I also changed up the design just a little bit to tone down all the prismarine bricks. With a uh, regular prismarine floor and a stripe of dark prismarine and prismarine ceiling. And some extra lanterns to keep it bright. But uh, yeah that's where I'm going to end the episode. Got a working guardian farm. And at least a shulker box full of prismarine shards, uh, full of seed lanterns, and I'm working on my second. So thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.